What is up, Planeswalker Steric 6? Back with some more Magic the Gathering reviews. Previews. Words. Spoiler discussion. All of that nonsense. Anyway, head on over to flipsidegaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. It's a good deal. Helps support the channel. Now, as I said, we're going to be talking about the second batch of uh, Ravnica Allegiance spoilers. And there are a large number of cards to go over since I decided to do this like weekly and... This is technically like the first week of spoilers and we got a ton. So uh, I do want to first go through the kind of like reprints uh, and things that aren't really necessarily like relevant. And just kind of give a my take on their art. Uh, I like this Hollow Fountain, but I do think the Return to Ravnica Hollow Fountain is better. Uh, this Gala Shrine, I really like, but it's really hard to get past the stained glass of the Return to Ravnica Gala Shrine. Uh, that said, the floating star uh, in the background is a part of my character in the D&D campaign's, like, suite of spells. So, I, I think I had to give the edge just for that. I think I prefer OG Stomping Ground. OG Stomping Ground really felt like a... like a really old Ruin City. This seems, to, like, still fresh. Uh, and I guess that's why I like the OG Guild Pact Stomping Ground. The Gate Crash, the gate crash one is also quite nice, uh, but... I think this is my least favorite of the Stomping Grounds. Not because it's bad, I just, I like the other ones better. Uh, Blood Crypt. <sighs> Honestly, I think I, I think this is my favorite of the Blood Crypts. The OG Dissension one, eh, I don't know. It was a little little hazy for me. Uh, and the Return to Ravnica one seemed too much like a torture chamber. This seems like, you know, an actual, like, carnival thing. Which is kind of like a new thing that they decided to have. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think this is my favorite of them. Breeding Pool. Uh, well, I dislike the Return to Ravnica Breeding Pool because breeding pool, I don't like lands with creatures like in the art. I, it's just a weird like personal thing. Um, I like the buildings and stuff. I just didn't like the weird like creature in it. Uh, and the OG Breeding Pool is like freaking weird. Uh, so actually, I think this is probably my favorite Breeding Pool. I think uh, I think Jen did a really good job on the, the Breeding Pool. I think it's nice. The Azorius Locket. It, it looks good. <laughs> it, it looks like an Azorius Locket. It's very bland. And it has the Azorius Uh The Orzhov Locket. I don't like... I don't like that it's an oval. <laughs> I know that's like the stupidest thing. But I really wish it was like... Just a circle. Like the fact that... This is an oval... Thing. It bugs me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean... Still. It's cool. I love the... I love the Orzhov um, aesthetic. But... It's an oval. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm horrified of Rakdos. Look at this. It's a, it's a chain that has spikes on it. Nah. Girl Signet. Uh, I, I hate those savages, so. <laughs> Cinematic Locket is real real clean. Uh, I, I really like this locket. Yeah, it's clean. I like it. Azorus Guildgate. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. This one is strange. Because, <laughs> like, it's just like a giant... I, I can't not see a face here, alright? Like, there's two eyes and a giant mouth. And it just, it just looks like it's vomiting the stairs. I can't not see that. Uh, I mean, it's fantastic. Church of Deals. It's kind of... It's not ornate enough. Who would go to this carnival? I love I love the addition of, like, these. These, I think, are, like, things that are actually used in real carnivals, like, to hold streamers. But but these people are insane. They're not going to come back. This is horrifying. Actual horrifying. This I mean, this just looks like you're going into a nightclub that has blood coming out of it. I, I can't tell if that's actually blood or if that's just, like, the lighting. But this is fine. You know, you go to the, that nightclub if you want to have a good time. I mean, it's it's gruel. It's just going to be like ruined towers and stuff. This, though, this is hilarious. This is the best guild gate ever. <laughs> it's a broken door. <laughs> it's a broken door. Uh, Sure, it's a bunch of people flying into Zono. Uh, the Zonots, for those who don't know, is, those are the Simic sinkholes. And then these people are like underwater. I, I, I don't think these are supposed to be merfolk, though, because the merfolk in Ravnica have like legs i think so that's weird but eh. all right then we'll actually get things really started with our first of the cards angelic exaltation three and a white enchantment whenever creature you control attacks alone it gets plus one plus x plus x until the turn where blah 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 i like that they named it exaltation because this is essentially an exalt card uh, or ex an exalted card uh that said I don't think this card is particularly strong. Uh, I think in limited, it might be quite good if you have a flyer 
as well as a few like really annoying dudes to deal with on the ground. So you have one big flyer that you keep hitting through and they get buffed by the rest of your teams who, who are staying on block, uh, block duty. But in general, I think this card is a little slow for what it does in something like standard. Uh, yeah. Kind of, kind of just a, a weakish card. It's, it's nice that it's like interesting. It's something different, but smothering tide tithe is really cool. It is a white, uh, kind of ramp spell for a uh, commander. It's three and a white. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that pair has to pay a two mana tax or you get a treasure token. Treasure tokens are now deciduous. Uh, Mark Rosewater said that uh, essentially whenever you, whenever they need to just like have something that like has this style of effect, they can use treasure tokens. It's not something that they're going to put um, like connected too much to a specific world. It's just things are just treasures. And I think that's really cool. I, I, I really appreciate these tokens. I think they're very effective tools that they can use. Additionally, I think this card is really awesome. Obviously not standard. Four mana enchantment that does nothing. Uh, the the immediate turn it comes into play. I, I think it's just way too uh, slow. In limited, maybe. Uh, even then, your opponent, by, by this point, maybe they're just like able to play, like just to pay the mana. That said, I think in EDH, this really helps specifically mono, mono white decks keep up with their opponents. If you are not one of the players who is playing some of the other higher end, you know, like artifact based ramp, essentially, uh, this is something that can, can help you. And if you're just playing a, a tax deck that's themed around taxes, cough, cough, I am, uh, this is a card that I'm going to try anyway, regardless of whether or not I need the ramp. It is just a nice thing to have. For what it's worth, the fact that you're also getting artifacts is really nice. Um, the fact that you're getting treasure, I was talking about this on stream, and it was pointed out to me that we currently have a win condition with treasure. So I'm going to try and put a treasure deck together that has Smothering Tithe and uh, the win condition, who's, like, I can see the art, and I can't think of the darn name. Revel in Riches, there we go. I'm going to try to have that. Uh, that, I think, is going to be interesting, but other than, like, meme decks like that on Arena, I don't think this card is going to see uh, any, like, non-EDH constructed play. Verity, Verity Circle, I think. Uh, two and a blue enchantment whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped. If it isn't being declared as an attack, you may draw a card. And you can pay five to tap target creature without flying, so you can't hit flyers. Uh, no, this, this card is easily too slow. In limited, this is honestly fine because it is a, a tap down mechanic. Uh, it does affect your opponents trying to do shenanigans with like any interesting creatures that have tap abilities. Uh, for what it's worth, this is annoying for mana creatures like Lana Elves, but I think it's just for constructed, it's too slow. Uh, for limited, you know, you can tap something down every turn, but it does come at the cost of five mana. It is five mana to get to tap something and draw a card, which is nice, but unless the Azorius have uh, a lot more ways to tap down creatures, then I just don't see this seeing any actual play. Hugh Mungulus. Uh, first of all, uh, his name is Hugh Mungus, uh, and also... The, I mean, this, the, it's a 5-mana 2-5 Hexproof. It's, it's essentially just, like, another Popper Turtle. But the, the real thing that matters here is uh, is right here. Searching the city for Fibblethip felt like sifting the rain for a single drop of blood. I really hope that in the third set, Fibblethip gets a legendary creature card. Because people are going to go insane if that happens. Uh, I saw on the Ravnica, or Ravnica, on the Magic subreddit that someone was like, they need to have... Uh, da, da, da. the reunion card. Oh gosh, I have to actually like type this out because I'm dumb. Reunion. Co they need to have cathartic reunion for Humungulus and Fibblethip, and it would just be the funniest thing. Uh, that's it. It's I mean it's it's not great. Quench. A lot of people. A lot of ha a lot of contention surrounding this card. Um, it's it's a worse mana leak and it's a worse rune snag, but. It's probably just still going to see play in standard. And I think, honestly, I think this is a fair counterspell. It's fantastic early on uh, at, at stalling the early game things. But as soon as you hit the late game, uh, and even before the late game, if your opponent knows that this is in the format and they know how to play around it, uh, it, it falls in power level significantly. That said, I think this is going to see play because it works early. And two, because you can discard it to the jumpstart spells. You you can discard it to Radical Idea. You can discard it to Canvas Insight. Beacon Bolt, if you're playing that, uh, discard to that as well. Uh, so honestly, I think that Quench is a strong card. I think it's going to see standard play easily. Um, outside standard, 
you have Mana Leak and Rune Snag. Uh, even for Popper, uh, Popper has Rune Snag. So I, I run Rune Snag in uh, in some Popper decks, and uh, Quench is not good enough. It does not quench my thirst. That said, I do want to highlight her face because she is like, oh, you thought that would work, and it is just the best. Precognitive Perception, three blue blue, or three double blue, as I like to say. Instant, draw three cards. Addendum, if you cast a spell during your main phase, instead scry three, then draw three. It's, I think it costs too much. I think it's a good effect. Uh, I think even, you know, Addendum to scry first, then draw three. You know, I think the power of Addendum is when you are put into a situation where you need to get, a, like, a certain thing, a certain effect, then, like, if you're looking for a specific card in a certain scenario and you need to draw that card to either win or stop yourself from losing, then you can utilize the additional effect on your turn to get value because you're going to do it anyway, right? So if you really need a certain card, you get to look potentially six cards deep with Precognitive Perception. That said, I think Chemist Insight is probably still going to be, be played over this because of the fact that it's five mana and not four. That one additional turn of not drawing a card, I think is possibly uh, too impactful. Uh, I don't know personally. This is possibly going to see play as a one or two of in some control deck. I just don't know what it is because I am not great at the game. <laughs> Mass Manipulation. I'm fairly certain that this card's garbage. <laughs> like, it's... Is six mana to take one thing? Well, I guess that's just like... That's essentially just Impulse's clutches now that I think about that. And since it's not an enchantment... The triple blue hurts, though. That's the difference, is that Impulse's clutches just is two blue... This is quad blue. This is XX quad blue to gain control of X target creatures in our planeswalkers. To get two things, that's two, four, eight mana. All right, the more I'm thinking about this, the more the more I actually kind of like it. <laughs> the, the quad blue makes this almost impossible. I think, I think maybe if there's like a mono blue or just like blue, splash, white, black, or red, not, not ant, just one other color, then maybe this is a decent finisher. But gosh, I, I, I don't think that you can justify quad blue. I actually think this this is a strong card. I just don't think it's playable, if that makes any sense. And I hope it makes sense. Like, this is strong. I just think it's not good. In EDH, maybe. In EDH, honestly, I think this is probably fine. Like, giving it more thought. Initially, I thought this card's trash. But giving it more thought, I think it's probably fine. Sphinx of Foresight is a two double blue Sphinx. 4-4 four, four flyer. You may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do scry through it at the beginning of your first upkeep. It's good that they're doing it... At the beginning of your first upkeep, not not the beginning of the game. Because this means that you get to... If you're going second, you get to see what your opponent is doing. Which will inform your scry. So that's really interesting. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. So it's a... if You should look at this card as a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four flyer at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Needless to say, this card's insane and limited. Right, this is, this is a limited bomb. This is like a first pick easy. Uh, in Constructed... In Constructed, is this card good? Well, it works for, for Unesh Sphinxes in Commander. Unesh, the Sphinx Lord. Nice. It's a decent Sphinx early on. That that deck needs more of those. But in Standard... Uh, maybe... I, I've heard some people say that maybe in Mono Blue Tempo. But honestly, like... You have access to a 3-mana X4... And X is usually going to be greater than 4, so... I don't know. I, I I like the card. I really do. It's just whether or not it sees a lot of play is... is definitely up for debate. It It's good in Flyers. Maybe we see another Flyer deck. Because we we do still have... Uh, whatever the heck the in Flying Enchantment is called. Favorable wins. So, there's still that. Reasonable. Spawn of Mayhem. Two double black. Creature Demon. Spectacle. One double black. Flying Trample. Because all demons apparently have flample. At the beginning of your upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals 1 damage to each player. Then if you have 10 or less life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. It's, it's a 4-mana, four 4-4 four, four flying triple. Already, 1, bomb and limited. It is a mythic, so that's something to note. Uh, but the, the thing is, this makes me think that black with a, a small red aggro is going to be a thing. Because you're going to be able to curve, you know, 1-drop, 2-drop this. Because of the spectacle. And then... On each subsequent turn that this is alive, it guarantees your spectacle. Because at the beginning of your upkeep, you're pinging a player, right? You're pinging yourself, but who cares? You're aggro. You don't, you're, who cares? Your, your, your life is forfeit. You have surrendered to the dark side. But 
The fact that this is, like, a really annoying creature to deal with and it essentially guarantees spectacle makes me makes me think that this is going to see play in uh, black-based aggro. I think this is going to be a strong, strong contender. Uh, I think you're going to really want to make sure that this thing dies as soon as it sees play, or as soon as it hits the board. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, th I, I think this is an easy sees play. Uh, other formats? Mm, no, not really. Uh, you can throw it in your demon your your demon decks in EDH, but it's probably too small. Uh, if you really need some some smaller demons, you know, this fits the bill. Uh, in, let's see, memes, memes in arena. This works with Liliana's contract, so I'll probably be trying some of that. You know, spawn a mayhem into uh, Doom Whisper into Rakdos. Seems these. Pestle and Spirit. Hilarity. This is this is actually funny. So, Pestle and Spirit, two and a black, menace, death touch, instant sorcery spells you control at death touch. So that means uh, if your opponent has a Galta and you have Pestle and Spirit out and you shock the Galta, it dies. Because one damage is enough to kill Galta. Uh, this card is a hilarious meme. It Honestly, it might see play in some sort of mid-range deck that includes red for, like, actual burn spells because it is, like... A fine body. It's a it's a three mana three two menace creature that d happens to have death touch. So if you get if you get double blocked, you're killing those two creatures unless they have like indestructible or something, right? So I think honestly this is a fine body. It easily could see play. Whether or not it will uh, remains to be seen. I like it though. I think I think it I think it has potential, but I don't know if it actually is going to do anything. Cry of the Carnarium replaces replaces Golden Mice. This thing exiles Golden Mice doesn't boom. Like, I mean, that's that's it. That's all that matters. This thing exiles. It deals with uh, Phoenixes. It deals with kind of Golgari uh, mid-range. Boom. That, I, it's, there's not much else to talk about it. I wish this was a zombie. Gutter Bones. Single black. Enters the battlefield tapped. 2-1. Return it from your graveyard to your hands. Activate this ability only during your turn. Only if your opponent lost life. This card is going to see play in uh, the aggressive strategies. You, This is a turn one play that attacks on turn two that enables your spectacle. Uh, this is a card that can come back uh, from the grave after your opponents have you know, killed it and you get more spectacle, spectacle off. Uh, that's where this card is mostly going to see play. That said, uh, you can do some interesting things with this. This is something that can go in Aristocrats, which I will get to later in the video. This is probably going to be quite a long video. So, you know, sit in there with me. Um, yeah, Gutter Bones sees... It, it it's, returns to hand, which is unfortunate, because it means that it's three every time you sacrifice it. Um, I wish we had a free sacrifice outlet, but it looks like we probably won't. Uh, so every turn, you can sack and replay this for four total mana to get a sacrifice value. Um, I mean, you still have reassembling skeletons, which is nice, because that's only three total mana every uh, sacrifice which adds up but you know this is this is mostly going to be an aggro card uh and it's going to see play in aristocrats because it's a card that comes back i mean that's that's pretty much what aristocrats needs blade juggler it's limited fodder <laughs> five mana three two when enters the battlefield do one damage yourself and draw a card you can spectacle it for three but uh even as a, a spectacle three like draw card it's just not good enough to see play in standard uh, even in limited, you have to get the spectacle off, I think, in order for this to be good. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm not great at limited, but I, I just don't think this is strong enough. Uh, Bankrupt in Blood. One in a black sorcery. As an additional cost, sack two creatures, draw three spells. This is very similar to... Pitiless Plunder? Something like that? Not sure. Costly Plunder. The spell that has Vraska on the art. Uh, it's very similar to that, except this is a sorcery, not an instant, and you have to sacrifice two creatures. That makes it potentially incredibly worse. That said, we do have Afterlife, right? So we, we do have... We do have plenty of things that we can just sack. There's also the fact that, like... You, you have other value. Like, you can maybe play this in Aristocrats. The problem is the reason that those effects are so good... Uh, the, like, the Reap... What is it? Reap, Reap the Abyss? Reap? Reap? Alter, Alter Reap? Yeah, Alter's Reap. Uh, things like Alter's Reap are so good is because you can respond to removal spells so that you're you're not really losing any anything. And the fact that this is a sorcery means that you're never going to have that option, right? You're never going to have the option of, in response to your opponent, uh, for trying to cast down one of your creatures, you just get to, to get them and uh, sack that creature as an additional cost. So because of that, I think that, honestly, this card is going to be unable to see play. I'm going to try it in Aristocrats, 
But unless Aristocrats is a thing, and that's really, I think, the only place that this deck could, that this card could go, I think that's probably just not going to see play. Fantastic Arb, I said, though. Two, uh, Burning Tree Vandal. Two, shut up. I have no idea if you guys could hear that, but uh, it is loud, rumbly from a car. Burning Tree Vandal, two and a red, two, one, with Riot. So either you get a three, two, dude, or a two, one, hasty man. Well, hasty lady, it looks like. Whenever Burning Tree Vandal attacks, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. This has an intervening if clause, so you do need to discard a card in order to draw the card. You can't just have no cards in hand and then, uh, and then like, draw. She is swole. Holy crap. Look at look at those forearms. I'm getting distracted. Uh, fine and limited, probably. Yeah, fine and limited. I don't see the scene play in standard. Or, like, anywhere else. Smelt Ward Ign Ignis is a 2-mana two 2-1. Two Two and a red, sacrifice it, gain control of a creature power three or less until end of turn. Uh, gains haste, whatever, sack it, and uh, end of turn. Oh, sorry, you don't sack it, end of turn. You, you give it back, end of turn. I, like, it's it's kind of a act of treason on a stick, except it is limited in what it can get. For that reason alone, I think this card's just not playable. <laughs> Electro Dominance. X, red, red. Deals X, it instant, deals X damage to any target. You may cast a card with converted mana cost X less from your hand without paying its cost. I was down on the card on stream initially, but I came around to it. The reason I was down on it is because we already have things like Banefire. We already have things like Expansion Explosion. But this means that you could theoretically kill something and play Nivmins at the same time, which is nice. You could end a turn, shoot something, and then draw some cards with, for example, uh, Canvases in Sight. You could say, well, you could just Expansion, Explosion, Explosion, and draw some cards with it. True. Very, very true. But this does allow you to kill something and play Niv. And I think I think that's the power of this card. Maybe we'll see more of a dedicated Niv deck that uses this. I'm not sure. Regardless, I think it's strong in EDH because you, like, kill something really big and then you, you play a guy. I, I, it's usually good. Skarkin Hellkite. Three, no, five mana, three double red. Dragon for a 4-4 four, four flyer with Riot. Uh... Three and a red deals two damage, divided as you choose among one or two targets. Activate this ability only if Skargan Hellcat has a 1-1 one, one counter. I think that's really cool. I think the fact that you have to choose either getting some value now uh, in the in the manner of having haste or getting value later of having a larger dragon that uh, has a nice activated ability. Nice. Uh, I think that's really interesting design-wise. I'm hoping that there are other designs like it that depend on you having chosen a specific thing for the riot. That said... I think there are just, unfortunately, other stronger 5-drops in the metagame, and this is likely likely not going to see any play. I'm not going to say it's get, definitely not, but it's likely not going to see play. Amplifier. This card's a meme. Two double red. You reveal, at the beginning of your upkeep, you reveal the top card of your library until you reveal a creature card. Then you, you have Amplifier's base power and toughness become double of that creature's base power and toughness. It's, it changes every turn. This is unreliable. It's hilarious. I love it, but it's a meme. It is not going to see any play. Growth Chamber Guardian is going to see play. For one, it's an elf. There's already an elf deck. This is easily put, uh, fit in that deck because it gives you something to do if you have nothing else. You can attack f for four power or four damage on turn three, right? You play this on two. If you don't have anything to do on turn three, you adapt, make it a four, four, and you can attack with it. And when you adapt, you get, or excuse me, not just when you adapt, but whenever one or more counters are put on it. You can search your library for another one, right? That's that's value, right? You're, you're paying three mana to make your creature bigger and put a card in your hand, functionally drawing a card, right? I think I think this is a very strong card. I think it's definitely going to see play in an elf deck. I don't know whether or not it's going to see play in like an adapt style deck, but uh, probably this, for what it's worth, uh, on turn three, if you have the pet that we'll talk about soon. Actually, I think it's this one. No, no. Yeah, it's, it's like way down. I forgot. Uh, the pet that like reduces the activated cost, uh, then you can play that and adapt this at the same time, which is very, very good. Uh, so I do think this is going to see play. Whether or not it sees play outside of elf decks or like meme adapt decks, I don't know, but I think it's going to see play. Wilderness Reclamation. I still don't think this card's good. A lot of people, th people think it is. I just don't see it. I understand that like these stack so you can cast instants like in between the triggers of uh, untapping your lands. I just don't think that playing a 
a four mana enchantment is is good enough when you also need to have something with it that said i could be wrong about this card if i'm wrong about any card it's probably this one and raise forerunners this is a eight mana card <laughs> that's essentially credit of behemoth except it only gives plus two plus two which means it's a lot worse than Crater of Beam. That said, uh, if you have a Super Elf Ramp deck, this is probably what you play as the top end because it makes all your elves super large and it does give them triple, which is very nice. Uh, you can essentially attack in with not a lot of fear because they do have Vigilance, which again is nice. Uh, it, this itself has Haste, so it is at least an 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven with Haste and triple and Vigilance. So that's, again, fine. I think it's fine in Standard if you are playing that kind of Elf Ramp. That said, every other format, not really. Uh... Maybe an EDH if you really need an additional uh, Crater Hoof Behemoth, but other than that, no. Mutant, I have no idea what this card's actual name is, but uh, Mutant Near Mint Pack Fresh. <laughs> uh, whatever, a non token creature enters the battlefield under your control if that creature does not have the same name as another creature you control, or a card in your graveyard, draw a card. This card's, like, not good. Maybe an EDH, this is fine, because... Because, like, all of your creatures just draw cards as long as you're not playing tokens, so... There's that. I think there are probably better better card draw enchantments in green. I'm not entirely sure, but I think there are. Uh, but in in limited, this is fine. You know, this is something that's a little slow, but definitely better in sealed than in, in draft for sure. So like uh, in sealed, you can play this and then get a lot of value out of it. But in draft, it might just be too uh, too slow. But in in standard, this is there's like no way. <laughs> this card is so incredibly slow. Doing nothing on turn four uh, in order to maybe do something on turn five in a deck that if you're building it to work with mutant near near main pack fresh uh which is not the real name i just want to make sure you guys know that uh uh it, it's just like not good so yeah rampage of the clans it's a four minute instant destroy all artifacts and enchantments for each permanent destroy this way it's controller creates a three three green center token i mean sure this is not gonna see play in center because there aren't enough artifacts and enchantments for this to matter um additionally you even if you destroy artifacts and enchantments that your opponents have uh they get something probably more deadly to you um for what it's worth you can combo this with combo this combo this with treasure tokens so if you want you can like get a bunch of treasure tokens and then blow them up yourself at the end of your opponent's turn and then have a bunch of centaurs and like win with them that's reasonable that's something you can do maybe i'll try it on the channel but overall, I think this card is not standard playable. And in EDH, there are just better cards that destroy all artifacts and champions, like Ban of Progress. So I don't know if it's going to see play there either. If you need more of these effects, sure. Uh, for what it's worth, it's a it's a story spotlight card. So I guess the Gruul clans are going to invade at some point. I don't know. Biogenic Upgrade is a 6 mana sorcery, 4 green green. Distribute 3 1 1 counters among 1, 2, or 3 target creatures. Not notice that you're distributing 3 1 1 counters, right? It's not give 3 1 1 counters to 1, 2, or 3 creatures. It's a total of 3 1 1 counters being distributed amongst 1, 2, or 3. Uh, I did see a few people on the forums that were a little confused by that. Then double the number of 1 1 counters on each of those creatures. It only doubles the number of counters that you place on these 3 creatures as well, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, but that said, in in standard it's like unplayable in limited possibly i honestly don't know but in edh that care about uh counters being placed on creatures cough cough decks like rayhan it's decent i guess <laughs> uh for what it's worth this also works with Kraj, where you can give your opponent's creatures plus one counters and then steal their abilities which is cool but uh, other than that it's it's just slow unfortunately titanic brawl really cool really flavorful uh both the gruel on the the left here and the simic on the right here uh both of them both of their mechanics deal with plus one plus one counter so this works with both of them it is a two mana instant costs one less if it targets a creature you control with a plus one counter on it, and it's just, it's just an instant speed fight spell instant speed fight spells are decent uh i expect this to probably see play in in very specific decks i don't know what those decks are and i don't think it's going to be very widespread but i do think this card is good enough to see play not like widespread but yeah high alert this is this is additional copies of arcady sabbath uh merchant i'm sure it's gonna be super happy that this card exists uh because it's another way to make defender decks uh like wall decks happen is it gonna be competitive no i don't think so but it works depose deploy tap target creature draw a card and create two one one color stopped artifact 
creature tokens with flying, you gain one life for each creature you control. I don't see this card being played unless unless there's like a white blue tempo deck that cares about having I guess you can have like a white blue tempo style deck that includes Karn or not not necessarily tempo but like a mid-range deck that includes Karn and Tezzeret. I think I think that's possible. Yeah, okay, that seems reasonable. I don't know if it'll actually be a deck, but you know, it's decent. It also works with Dovin, the Grand Arbiter. 3 mana planeswalker loyalty 3. Oh goodness. I'm not going to read all of this out because my throat is going to get destroyed. Anyway, uh, I think Dovin is not great, and I think a lot of people are upset that Dovin is not great. That said, White Blue already has Teferi. Uh, Teferi is what I call a general Planeswalker. You don't have to build around Teferi in order for Teferi to be good. I much prefer build around Planeswalkers, limited Planeswalkers. Uh, sorry, Planeswalkers that are limited in scope. Um, like the, the four mana Liliana, right? I, I really like the designs of those. I just wish they were a little bit stronger, right? Because these these cards work in fewer decks, so you don't have to worry about them as much being uh, too overbearing in the format, uh, because, as I said, they only work in one deck. Uh, so I feel like you, they could push their power level just a little bit. Like, if this was four, four loyalty, I'm, well, it would go up to five. Uh, you'd probably have to turn a lot more knobs, but I, I don't think this card is like a, a garbage Planeswalker, which I've seen said many times. Uh, that said, it's probably just not going to see play. It might see, as I said, it might see play in like a Karn, Karn Tezzeret deck. Because, I mean, you could curve Dovin into Karn, into Tezzeret, right? That is a thing you can do. Uh, you, you can Dovin minus one, right, to protect Dovin. Karn minus two to protect them both. And then Tezzeret plus one, I think, is the one that gives you a, a Thopter. So, like, you can do that. I think, I think there's potential for a white-blue Thopter deck with those three Planeswalkers, right? I think... That is something that can happen, and I think that Dovin fits really nicely into a deck like that, where you do want to have creatures, but you also want to have a weird controlly style uh, strategy. But I appreciate that Dovin is not just, oh, this is a white-blue planeswalker, it's going to go in control, and uh, it's going to be really strong. Like, I, I appreciate that that is not what it is. Deputy of Detention, this is Detention Sphere on a Stick, as you can see here. Uh, there's something in this, uh, in this circle here. Go away. Go up there. There we go. There's something in the circle here. Uh, art is fantastic, in my opinion. I just realized that the artist's name is Ghostly. Interesting name. Anyway, is this card good? It, for one thing, it gets found with Militia Bugler, which is really cool. Two thing, yes, I think this card is decent. I don't know if I'll actually see play, but I think this card is at the very least decent because it hits any permanent, any non-land permanent that, uh, that your opponent controls, right? I'm a little annoyed that it is on opponent controls. I kind of... I like when you're able to remove your own creatures. For example, if you have uh, if you have a, a nice board and then you're afraid of a board wipe, you could de deputy of detention your like second strongest creature, not your strongest creature, but like your second strongest creature or something. And then if you do get board wiped, then you get your st second strongest creature back. I really like that that level of interplay, and I'm a little disappointed that this is uh, that this can't target your own creatures. Other than that, I think this card's fine. I think it's good. Whether or not his play is entirely up to whether or not there will be a white-blue deck that isn't uh, instant speed control, but maybe is more main phase control, uh, which which those decks do exist. So, Absorb is a good counterspell. You get counter spell and you gain three life. A lot of people are saying that this is like not as good as Ionize because of the double blue. This card is better than Ionize because in a control deck, the Ionize is good in a deck that isn't trying to control the game. Right. Uh, Ionize is good in a deck that likes the incidental burn, right? The, the fact that you're dealing a little bit of two damage, right? It Absorb is better in a, a random control deck because of the fact that the point of a control deck is to live until your cards outvalue your opponent's cards. And the way you do that is by having that incidental like, and that's why uh, the two mana gain three draw card spell uh, revitalized. That's why that card is seeing play right now. Because the f you you want to just filter through cards, and that incidental life gain is very helpful. I think Absorb will absolutely see play. 1000%. Will it see play in all the control decks that run white and blue? Maybe not. But it will see play absolutely. Kaya Orzhov and Serp uh, Usurper. This is another of those uh, cards that people are disappointed by, but I think this card is actually fine. It's, again, 3 mana, 3 loyalty Planeswalker. Uh, this card is not a standard card. This is not I don't think this card's meant for standard. I think this is meant for 
uh, Legacy and Modern. I don't know if this will see play in those formats, but this card is almost certainly for Legacy and Modern. Uh, it's plus one hurts graveyards, which is a big thing in modern right now. And it's minus one exiles target non land permanent with converted mana cost one or less, which is a lot of things in modern. Uh, this just outright destroys uh, Death Shadow, right? Like, that's what this card is for. Um, for what it's worth, <laughs> you can combo Kaya with mm, Mnemonic Betrayal. So you exile like everything in their graveyard and then. You minus five them. I just let me, let me just make sure mnemonic betrayal actually exiles. Uh, da, da. whoops. That's mn, it's mn betrayal. There we go. Mnemonic. I can't speak words. Exile. Yeah. Boom. It's great. You. No one saw that. Uh. So, so so yeah. If your opponent has a large number of cards, then you can hurt them a lot. Uh. That said, I I don't see this card seeing play in standard unless standard becomes really wacky. Um, this is this is easily a modern legacy card. So, Seraph of the Scales. This art is so good. This art's so good. Uh, it's a four mana flying four three that has two abilities plus afterlife. If I'm going to try it in a different take on Abzan midrange, I'm going to try a Mardu midrange. I'm going to try and make Mardu angels. Are any of these things going to work? I don't know. But for what it's worth, you can you can curve, right, this into Lyra. Right? Aurelia's fine. It works with this by making this attack for six, right? Uh it works with resplendent by just being an angel and being annoying. So I think that you could maybe play this in a dedicated mid-range style deck. But unfortunately, I don't actually think this is going to see enough play because there are a bunch of other annoying four drops like Rekindling Phoenix that I think are probably just stronger than this. Taser Karlov. <sighs> we're really getting we're really getting close to just me being even more sad. Oh my gosh, both of these were done by Meg Alley. This is one of the best artists of all time. Um, she's great in Aristocrats. The problem is that we don't have a free sack outlet yet. And I don't know if we're going to get one. Additionally, in Abzan Aristocrats, you're going to want Tesa, because she makes your death triggers happen twice, which is really nice. You're going to want Alenda, because she is a really good replacement effect for herself, and she gets larger. She, she's really nice uh, mitigation to board wipes. And you're going to want Poison to Archer, because that's like the way you win the game. You, you poison tip the crap out of them. That's a lot of four drops. That you want to run. I I just wish we had better engine. Right? We have like all the pieces are there. We just have one problem. It's this. This is the problem. It it costs one to use. I wish that there was this one was here. Right? If this was it, they could have even made it like white, black, black, or like white, white, black or something, and gave us a free sack outlet. Keep the, the power and toughness the same. Two two. Whatever, it's, it's, not, it's not a free sack outlet. And I know some people are going to be like, well, but maybe Wizard just thinks that the free sack outlet, they're, they're too strong for standard. Yeheni was in Kaladesh. Yeheni was a three mana, hasty, two, two sack outlet. If you want this to not be like played, uh, like as many of them, right? Just make this legendary too. Like, <laughs> I just don't understand why Wizard hates us. That said, as soon as we get Arena Modern, I'm making Aristocrats because we have Yeheni. We have, like, Tesa. We have a bunch of Afterlife cards. Dude, Arena Modern, Aristocrats is going to be nice. <laughs> this card's fine. Um, it gets Death Touch and Indestructible. It's a really nice, annoying blocker because of Afterlife. It's a, it's a good card. It's just, it's just not what I want. Consecrate Consume. This card is going to see play because this kills Carnage Tyrant. It kills Golta. It kills Nullhide Ferox. This right here helps Mardu and Abzan so much, both control and mid-range. I don't know if it's good enough for the mid-range versions, but in control, this is helpful. Additionally, you get instant speed exile a card from a graveyard, right? This hits the Golgari decks. You know, if your opponent casts Find, you get to 
to remove one of those targets. You get to remove the best target. If your opponent trusts a Memorial to Folly, you get to remove the best one. Uh, you can do this in response to your opponent's last trigger of the Elders Reborn, right? And you get to draw a card. It's unfortunate that you do have to have a target. You have to absolutely have a target in order to draw a card. But there's going to be plenty of targets for this, right? I think this, I think easily this is going to see play. Easily. Could be wrong, but I think it's going to see play. This is the weakest of the, uh, the guild colored uncommons. I do wish it had afterlife, but it's already a spirit. Uh, that said, it's fine. Your opponent discards a card and you gain three. That, that's okay in limited. Uh, I don't think it's going to see, see play in standard. I think this is the weakest of them that we've seen so far. Um, yeah, I mean, just there's not even much to talk about it. The art is amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. What other what other things has, has he done? Oh, gosh, a lot. But, yeah, the art's, the art's really cool. Grasping Thrall. This card is going to be awesome in Arena Popper, I think. Uh, three mana, three, three, flying. When it enters the battlefield, it drains for two. I think that's good. Um, I think it's weird that this deals damage. It doesn't just cause loss of life, but that's fine, I guess. Uh, for what it's worth, I think this card's amazing and limited, right? A 5-mana 3-3 three, three flyer, I think it by itself is fine. The fact that it also drains you for 2 is really helpful. Uh, but really, I think where the shines is a white-black drain strategy in Arena Popper. Other poppers, nah, too slow. But Arena Popper seems decent. I'm probably going to make this in Arena Popper. Hydroid Crisis. Crisis. I'm going to say Kaiju. Hydroid Kaiju. Uh, X, blue, green. Green, blue, whatever. Jellyfish Hydra Beast. <laughs> Oh, gosh. When you cast the spell, you gain half X life and draw half X card round down to each time. Really cool. Flying Trample, and it's a battle code X11 counters on it. This card is good because it's on cast. If it wasn't on cast, this card would be trash. But the fact that it's on cast makes me think this is probably going to see play in some sort of blue-green, like, maybe even Teamer, Teamer Ramp. Maybe wants this because, you know, you gain life and draw cards regardless of whether or not this resolves. And if it does resolve, then you have a large creature. Uh, let's see. So you can... Let's compare this to uh, to Plockworm. Right? Plockworm is a 7-mana card. If you if you pay 7-mana for this, X is 5. You then gain 2 life and draw 2 cards for a 5-5 five, five Flying Trample. Right, So it is 2 smaller than uh, Plockworm. It gains you significantly less life, but it draws you more cards, and it draws them immediately instead of on dies. It also flies for what it's worth, so being smaller is less of an issue. Uh, I think I think you'll see see this uh, in ramp decks if ramp decks are a thing. Uh, I think I think there are just enough things right on this card that this card is reasonable. Biomancer's familiar. This is the card that works with the adapt elf thing. Uh, blue and a green, mutant, activated. It, it's training grounds on a stick. Next time Tar Creature adapts this turn, it adapts as though it has no 1-1 one, one counters on it. That's really cool. I, I think this is a really awesome card. It's going to be in my uh, adapt non-budget version because obviously it works so well with it. Um, it's a bear, so it's like fine and like limited and I guess maybe maybe standard. No, probably not. Uh, this is this is definitely more of an arena card. Uh, I don't see this making waves in standard. That said, this card is actually really strong because of the fact that it's just additional training ground. There are plenty of blue green version, blue green decks in Commander that just like more training ground effects. So this is probably just going to see play there. Prime Speaker Vanifar is Birthing Pod Reborn. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Birthing Pod is a really awesome artifact that is banned in modern. And I'm very sad because I played Birthing Pod in Modern. And I love that deck because I am a value boy and Birthing Pod is a value card. Uh, that said, probably too strong for Modern. Prime Speaker is too weak for Modern. Not only is she too slow, I honestly do think that Birthing Pod would be too slow for Modern right now because Modern is in a really weird state. Um, but she's also like too slow for Standard. She doesn't... I don't think there's enough like good creature chains that you're going to want to try and do that anyway. Um... You could, you definitely could try it. I just think that because of Lava Coil and uh, plenty of other uh, good removal, I just don't, don't think Vanifar is going to be in a good enough spot. That said, there are plenty of ways to protect her uh, with, uh, what is that card? Dive Down. So, you know, maybe there is going to be some sort of deck that sees play. I'm definitely going to try her out on Arena. Uh, she makes a cool Brawl commander. So if, if slash when we get Brawl on Arena, you'll see her there for certain. Um... Yeah, not too much to talk about, talk about this card 
other than the fact that she's a really cool reference to an older card, and she's good in Commander. <laughs> Speaking of good versions of older cards, this is Frilled Mystic. This is essentially a Mystic, Sma Myst Mystic Snake 2.0, 1.5 something, I don't know. Uh, Mystic Snake costs one less green, I believe, uh, but it had one less point of power. This, one more point of power, and costs one more green. I think... Oh, I just realized that this was the Simic... The Simic uh, Uncommon. This is probably the best of the Uncommons. Uh, this card... This card's insane. This is... If if there's gonna be, like, a, a Simic, like, counter... Ca th this card's gonna see play. <laughs> I'm almost certain of it. It, it. It's a counter spell that has a creature attached to it, right? Like... I, I just don't see this not seeing, seeing play. Also, it's a lizard wizard. And an elf. Yeah, it's going to see play. I'm sure of it. Uh, he called me Mr. Pig. Uh, this is a one red green enchantment. Creature spells you control can't be countered. Non-creature token... Or non-creatures you... Non-token creatures you control have riot. I can read. I swear. Uh, I believe riot stacks. So I think you can get like two 1-1 one -one counters or a 1-1 one -one counter in haste. I'm not entirely sure. But I assume they stack... Doesn't make sense that they don't. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense that they didn't. Uh, that said, creature spells you control can't be countered. Apparently, we're gonna make another version of the can't be countered deck and run this. So, I that said, I don't think this card's particularly strong. It like maybe if you are in a matchup where your opponent has a lot of counter spells, then you bring this in. But even then, not sure. It comes down on three, and by turn three. You're probably gonna like be out of gas, honestly. So I think that this card's just not good enough. <laughs> Speaking of card that is good enough, Zerta Goblin is a two mana riot creature for two two. This card's either a bear with haste or a two mana three three. I'm fairly certain that if there's a red green or red green X deck, this isn't it. It's it's a it's a two mana three three or a two mana two two with haste. It's good. Believe me, it's good. Ravager Worm. I wish this card had one more point of power. Uh, I play Myel in EDH, and this card would be so cool in it. Uh, that said, this card has four option choices. I would be surprised if this doesn't see, uh, play somewhere. And for what it's worth, I'm going to play Mer... Uh, not Mer. Worm Tribal. I can't think of any other worms than Ravager Worm and Palak Worm. But guess what? I don't care. I'm playing Ravager Worm and Palak Worm in a deck on Arena at some point. Believe me. It's going to happen. Uh, that said, I, this card might not be good enough, which makes me sad because this card's really interesting. A lot of people are like mad that it's a mythic. I think this is a really interesting card, and the the fact that it has four potential outcomes alone makes this mythic worthy in my eyes. Uh, I, I I hope it sees play, but I just I'm not sure it will. Bullrack Clan Crusher. It's a limited card. It works with both the Gruul and uh, Adapt or Gruul and Simic mechanics. And it's interesting, but playing a 5-mana 4-4 four four and not attacking with it seems weird. Uh, yeah. Judith, the Scourge Diva. I love her so much. She's so cool. Also, it looks like this guy's dabbing. <laughs> he's not. I, I know his arm's over here, but the shadow, it just makes it look like he's dabbing. Anyway, 3-mana. Other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0 oh, whenever a non-token creature you control dies. Judith, the Scourge Diva, deals 1 damage to any target. So this is for the Jund aristocrats the problem is that they unless they print a mono black sack outlet which i don't think they will because they already printed an orzov sack outlet this would be for the uh the jund version of the aristocrats deck unfortunately we don't have a mono black sack outlet that's free she'd be really nice because she can ping things just like the 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 poison departure and poison departure costs four and this costs three and it would work out perfectly but no but no I'm so sad. Uh, that said, is she good enough to see play in standard? I don't know, and I, I want to say probably not. For what it's worth, she does come down and immediately make your creatures bigger, so actually that I'm thinking about it, maybe she does see play in black-red aggro? But I don't know. This this standard is going to be interesting. That's all I can say. Uh, Rakdos, the showstopper. Uh, I, I played a little bit with, uh, with some friends, like Proxy EDH, this card doesn't kill as many things as you hoped it did. Uh, this is this is like full RNG, and uh, if RNG is not on your side, you're you're paying six mana for maybe a Chupacabra, right? Uh, that said, it is still a six mana six six flample uh, creature. 
I'm going to try in Liliana's contract because it's a demon and there are plenty of demons in standard right now. But is it like really standard playable? No, probably not. Yeah, probably not. Carnival, Carnage, the last one for the day. Carnival deals one damage to dark creature or planeswalker and one damage to that permanent controller. So of, of note, you do have to have a creature or planeswalker to hit in order to hurt your uh, uh, your opponent. Uh, and then Carnage deals three damage to target opponent. That player discards two cards. It is a one mana more expensive Blightning. That said, uh, having two slightly mediocre uh, effects are often better than having one good like Blightning effect, for example. Uh, so I think this... We'll probably see play not entirely sure uh, i like the card uh might might be fine in like a mardu a mardu mid-range deck not something that's super aggressive not something that's super controlling i think maybe this is fine in mid-range that said carnival is kind of weak sauce uh it's really nice if you're able to kill a lanor elf on turn one uh but other than that not not a ton of utility here it does turn on spectacle but i don't know if that's actually going to matter that much holy crap this has been incredibly long Long time talking. I need to go get probably some ice cream, frankly, because holy crap, my throat. Uh, anyway, I'd like to thank my patrons, especially Salamander Draga. If you'd like to join them uh, and support the channel, find links to that in the description down below, along with links to the Discord. Uh, yeah. I uh, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, go and tap that like button, add a subscription to your mana pool, and cast a comment in the comment section down below. Until next time, uh, my throat hurts. All will be one.